Today, by popular request, Strawberry Cider. You might remember we did a tasting of a strawberry cider that we made off camera a couple years ago that we actually thought was better when it was first made than two years later. Well, in an effort to recreate that, here's this video. It's going to be really, really simple. Um, so we're going to do this in two parts. The first part will just be the making of and the adding the strawberries, and then the second part will be the racking, bottling, and all that. Anyway, you might notice this very large gallon contain well, not very large, this gallon container of apple juice. Guess what? This is literally a fermenter with free juice in it. <laughs> now, today we're going to be using that juice. So this is essentially a free cider. You with me? You with me? But anyway, the idea behind this is, this is really is a wonderful one gallon fermenter. Six, 6.5 size bungs actually fit in this wonderfully well. But what I want to do is take the cap off. Now you heard that sound, right? That means this hasn't been opened before. That means the whole contents in here were sanitary. They were sterile, okay? There's nothing growing. There's no need to worry about sanitizing this part of things. However, there's a little bit too much liquid in here because as much as this is a cider, it's really more of a wine. I am gonna be adding some sugar to boost that alcohol level just a little bit. That way we can keep it sweet without having to pasteurize later on. So I want that to go down about to the shoulders. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pour out some of my free apple juice. A little bit more of my free apple juice. About that much. Now, a very important step in any brewing is taking a taste of your source products. This is really good apple juice. Yeah, I want to take a reading of the juice itself. So this way, even though everything's been sanitized in... The Red, red bucket, bucket of Sanitization! We don't have to worry about it because I'm not going to introduce new things into this vessel. So we'll just take it right from the glass here. No big deal. Now, an interesting thing about this particular cider is that when we tasted it, it didn't really taste like apple to me. And I wonder if the apple just melded with the strawberry nicely or if it actually overtook. Either way, the, the apple here is really more just a base. That's why we're not spicing it. We're not adding any extra flavors. <laughs> Somebody thought it was going to spill. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, so we're not adding extra flavors to it. This is just our base. We're going to flavor it with strawberries in a couple of weeks. But what I want to do is just have an idea of where where this starts at so I know how much sugar to add. It's a uh, 1.052. Okay, not a problem. 1.052. Yep, that's just the juice itself. Okay, so now that we made room, we took a reading, I'm going to add one pound of white sugar to this. I was pretty sure I was gonna do that because usually bottled juices come out to 1.050 to 1.055. This one, 1.052 is in the mark. What I'm actually doing though, is I'm overshooting the tolerance of our yeast, which our yeast today is going to be Safe Bale SO4. I happen to have half a packet. Somehow I always have half a packet of yeast laying around. I don't know how that happens. Anyway, I am going to add the one pound of sugar because that will add 0 0.046 gravity with the 0 0.052 gravity gives me 1.096 gravity, which comes out to somewhere in the 12 and a half or so percent range. If this is a 10% yeast, that means we'll have about 20 points, 0 0.020 of gravity left at the end. Somebody's going to remember that I said that and it should end at about 1.020 before we add the strawberries. That's sweet. I want it sweet. This is supposed to be sweet. So to pour sugar, there's a couple ways. You can open the bag and dump it in, which is what I usually do when you guys aren't watching. But when I do it on camera, <laughs> I usually like to use a funnel because, well, I make messes. I usually do it over the sink so nobody sees. Doesn't matter, it goes down the drain. But today, I'm gonna use a funnel. You wanna make sure you're using a dry funnel, which means no, this was not sanitized, but it was washed really, really good and left to air dry. I really don't think any pathogens that could be on there are gonna get caught on the sugar on their way in yeah, it's just not something I'm going to worry about. So if you would, wouldn't mind holding that funnel steady, please. One pound, 16 I, ounces, 454 <clears throat> grams. Here we go. 
And by holding the funnel, I'm not actually touching it. I'm just... Yeah, she would alter the reading. I'm having a protective barrier in case it goes wonky. She is steadying it. It's at this point that I hope I took out enough juice. That, my friends, is a little bit scary of a headroom, but I think we'll be okay. Now, before I add yeast, I want to make sure I mix this up and I'm going to take another reading on it. Another advantage of using this style of fermenter that comes with the cap is you can just put the cap on it, screw it down, and now you can mix. And we want to mix all that sugar in. This will take a few minutes. In order to know if you've mixed enough, let it sit for a minute. Take a look. I don't see any sugars. A good rule of thumb at that point is, if you think it's mixed enough, mix for another two minutes. Thorough mixing does a couple of things. First, it mixes the sugars in with the apple juice, making a homogenous mixture. Second, see all that foam? That's air. You want oxygen to get into this must when it first starts out. That way the yeast can get to town reproducing so that they build a large colony and get to work. But now I'm going to take the lid off and take another reading because now I want to know, did I calculate things properly? Did I weigh everything right? Remember, we're looking for approximately a 1.098 initial gravity. Okay, now I said 1.098. The reason I'm saying that is it's 1.052 for the juice itself, 0 0.046 for the sugar, that's 1.098. Now, I happen to know something, and that's that I don't have a full gallon in this jug. So I'm going to guess it's going to be probably like a 1.102. Let's find out. By the way, do you have to take readings? Do you have to know the specific gravity? No, but it sure makes it a whole lot easier to know how much sugar to put into stuff. I'm going to call it 1.100. looks like 1.101, but there's a little bit of foam there I think might be holding up. 1.100. I'm really happy with that. That gives a potential alcohol of 13.1%, right? But we know that it's a 10% yeast, so that means there'll be 3% residual sugars left. Well, 3% potential alcohol that won't be converted. So we're going to pour this right back in. Everything's clean, everything's sterile, there's no reason to throw that away. You could drink it if you want to, but it's just going to be a really super sweet version of this, which is already nice and sweet. Next step, we're going to add our yeast. Now, if you watch some of our older videos, we used to hydrate the yeast first and things like that. And then I found out that it's absolutely not necessary. Some people still do it, and you know what? There's nothing wrong if you wanted to. To me, it's an extra step, and when we're making videos and we want new people to get into this, the less complex we make this, the better. I know, I just said the less complex after giving you all those numbers, right? But <laughs> sorry, some of it is good to know. So um, I'm just gonna pour this right in. My rule for yeast addition is half a packet, or eh, three quarters to a teaspoon of yeast, for one gallon and a whole packet for three gallons and above. Okay, so that means if you're doing like two gallons, you only need about the same amount of yeast. Once you get into the three gallons and above, you wanna add a little bit more. You can still use only the one packet. It'll just take a lot longer to get going, like to the point that it could be many days to get going. And in that time, things can happen that you might not want. That's why we wanna do that. We don't want this to sit at room temperature in the danger zone with no yeast formation yet letting all that other bacteria have its way. You don't want that. So what I do want to do now though, is because I got a little bit of yeast on the side of the bottle, I'm just going to put the cap back on, give this a quick little shake, just to rinse that off a little bit. We don't want it stuck there. All right, now that it's all mixed, all I have to do is take the cap off, stick on an airlock with a bung. And I do highly suggest using these. You can leave the cap just slightly loose. It's a little bit dangerous, a little scary to me. It can be done. These give you entertainment value too, because you get to watch it go bloop, bloop, bloop. It's an important part of brewing, people. Everybody likes a good bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay then, <laughs> <laughs> moving right along. So what's gonna happen now? It's gonna sit for about two weeks, and at the two week mark, we're going to rack this probably into a bucket, okay? Because the fermentation will probably be done, but even if it's not, I'm okay with that. We're gonna rack this off, there'll be a lot of sediment in the bottom, put it into a bucket, and we're going to add the fruit at that point. So we'll see you soon. Through the magic of television, we are now eight days later. This is June 18th, where we started eight days before on June 10th. And this is what's happening. Okay, what you're seeing here is the very side where the liquid meets the air, basically, inside there. See all those bubbles coming up? 
that is a sure sign of fermentation. This thing's been pretty active um, for only eight days or for still at eight days, it's going really strong. And here's the airlock, how that's going. See, it's bubbling pretty quickly. I mean, we don't count bubbles or anything. It's just kind of a relaxing thing to watch. It's good to know that it's working and it's definitely working. Okay, when this first started going, which was within, within the 24 hours. hour, <laughs> definitely, Mark. Just a few hours. Um, it got super foamy up top. So yeah. if yours does that, that's perfectly normal. And there is a very slight residue, but I think because there was such a thick layer of foam, we don't have a very finely defined Croissant line. Instead, we just have this little wavy. Yeah, you, yours pattern. might make a darker color or anything like that. That's perfectly fine. Um, what I do want to do right now, and I have been doing this almost every day, is the swirl. So those of you that have heard about it know what it's called, but you've probably never seen me do it. Literally that. The airlock will go nuts when you do this and you'll get a smell. This actually smells really nice. Unlike some that I've been swirling with me. <laughs> Normally when it's young and you swirl it, the gas co that comes out isn't the most pleasant and that's completely normal and fine. Yeah, that, this one smells a lot like apple. That is really the off-gassing, the waste product, as it would, that the yeasts are producing. And that's what's primarily going to be coming out. So that's why it doesn't smell good. Now, people ask why I do that. I never used to do the swirl, okay? And here's the reason why I do it. One, it gives me something to do, okay? <laughs> Rather than screwing with it, taking the top off, all that kind of stuff. No, don't do that. Leave the top on. But what it does is it degasses it and any yeast that might have fallen out and all that kind of thing, it might go a little inactive. It stirs everything back up again and gets an active ferment more active or keeping it active. By degassing, that helps the yeast too. So you will see clumps of stuff floating around in your brew when you uh, swirl it. That too is perfectly normal because what he's done is agitated the yeast cake that was starting to form at the bottom. What yeast cake? And now it's floating all we over We don't have yeast cake anymore. Now we have soup. <laughs> all right, so this is only eight days in. It's got a little bit of ways to go. As you can see, it is still very active. So we're going to put it back into fermentation. Let it keep doing its thing. See it in a couple of weeks. As always, guys, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.